In this demo, we will show how to make encoded B-scan measurements on a 0.375-inch, 9.53-millimeter thick aluminum plate. The backside of the sample contains four spots of simulated corrosion, as well as seven flat areas of reduced thicknesses. We will use the Olympus 38DL Plus thickness gauge with the 38DL Plus encoded B-Scan software option activated, along with a 5 MHz D790-SM dual element transducer, the corresponding transducer cable, an encoder cable, and the B-Scan-ENC B-Scan buggy. First, we will connect the encoder cable to the B-Scan buggy. The encoder cable and port on the buggy are keyed so that the cable can only be inserted one way. Both the connector on the cable and the port on the buggy have red markers to assist with connecting the cable properly. Make sure to line up the red markers on the cable and on the buggy. Once they are lined up and the keyed section of the encoder cable is seated properly in the port of the B-Scan buggy, we can apply pressure and the cable should snap into the connector. We can now plug the other end of the encoder cable into the top of the 38DL+. These connectors are also keyed, but they do not contain red markers. Pay close attention when connecting the encoder cable to the top of the 38DL+. Make sure that the keyed section of the encoder cable is properly seated in the slot of the port on the top of the 38DL+. Once it is seated properly, you can screw in the cable by applying slight pressure and turning the knurled section of the encoder cable clockwise. Screw in the cable until it is snug. It does not screw in all the way, so some threads will likely be exposed. This is fine. We can then plug the D790-SM transducer cable into the top of the 38DL Plus and turn the instrument on. Once the gauge powers on, it will prompt the user to perform a do-0. Make sure there is no couplant on the end of the transducer. You can then press and release the second F key first, and then press the yellow Cal-0 key. Once this process is completed, the measurement screen on the instrument will be displayed. We will use the waveform display to ensure that the D790-SM is inserted into the B-Scan buggy in a way that provides good signals on screen. Next, we will need to use a flathead screwdriver to remove the bell housing from the D790-SM transducer so it can fit in the probe holder of the B-Scan buggy. Once the bell housing is removed, you can apply water to the surface of the aluminum sample and then place the buggy onto the aluminum plate. Loosen the two set screws on the probe holder enough to allow the D790-SM to be inserted. Before tightening the two set screws, Check the waveform display on the 38DL Plus to make sure you are getting good signals. If the signals on the waveform display look good, you can tighten the two set screws until they are holding the D790-SM securely. At this point, we can enable B-Scan on the instrument. To do this, press the Setup menu key, then press the down arrow to highlight B-Scan, and then press the Enter key. Use the right arrow to enable B-Scan to on, then press the Enter key. For grid size, you have the option to display the B-Scan as half size or full size, which was discussed in previous slides. Typically, we recommend half size, so you can still see the A-Scan while you are scanning. This allows the user to easily observe if they are making a valid measurement or if the gauge is measuring a signal from noise. Continue pressing the Enter key until you get to encoder mode. For encoded B-Scan, the encoder mode can be set to either unidirectional or bidirectional as discussed in previous slides. Generally, bidirectional is used since it allows the user to back up the buggy to fill in areas of LOS if needed. Press the right arrow until the encoder mode is set to bidirectional, then press the Enter key twice. Since we are using the Olympus B-Scan-ENC buggy, we will use the default encoder pulse of 50 pulses per inch, or if you are using metric units, it would be 1.97 pulses per millimeter. Then press the Enter key to highlight Take Reading Every. As discussed in previous slides, having the instrument make measurements every 0.040 inches, 1 millimeter, will require the user to move the buggy quite slow since the gauge needs to take a reading every 0.040 inches or 1 millimeter. 
For this demo, we will change this setting to 0.100 inches, 2.54 millimeters, by pressing the right arrow. This allows us to move the buggy at a more natural speed, while still having good scanning resolution while inspecting the sample. The only other setting we will change is the B-Scan zoom factor. As discussed previously, an encoded scan with a zoom factor of 1 will yield a very compressed B-Scan. To change this, keep pressing the Enter key until B-Scan zoom factor is highlighted, then keep pressing the right arrow to change it to 8. You can then press the red measure key to return to the measurement screen. Before we perform the scan, we will calibrate the instrument using the 0.375 inch or 9.53 millimeter thick area of the plate and the 0.200 inch or 5.08 millimeter thin area of the plate. To do this, we will first press the yellow Cal Vel key. Then we will position the buggy over the thick area of the aluminum plate. Once the reading is steady, press the Enter key. Then we will use the arrow keys to change the value to 0.375 inches or 9.53 millimeters. We can then press the yellow Cal Zero key and then position the buggy onto the thin area of the plate. Once the reading is steady, press the Enter key. Then we will use the arrow keys to change the value to 0.200 inches or 5.08 millimeters. Then press the red measure key. Place the transducer and buggy setup on the right side of the aluminum plate, then press the red measure key to reset the captured minimum and the distance traveled. Then you can begin scanning the plate. You can watch the speed bar at the bottom of the screen to make sure you do not move the buggy too fast. Since we have Freeze Review turned on, we can press the Freeze key at any point in the scan and then use the left and right arrows to review different areas of the scan. The gauge displays the thickness in that spot and the distance the buggy has traveled to reach that spot. We can then press the Freeze key again and continue scanning the plate. Once the scan is complete, we can save it by first pressing and releasing the second F key and then pressing the Save Send key. If the scan goes beyond the instrument display, you will be asked if you want to save the B-Scan history which includes the portion of the scan that is no longer on screen. In most instances, you will use the right arrow to highlight Yes and then press the Enter key. The encoded B-Scan has now been saved to the instrument's internal data logger. If you want to review the saved scan, you can press the ID number Sign key and then press the down arrow to ID 001. The gauge displays the 1A scan it saved, which in this case corresponds to the minimum thickness reading. The user can press the second F key followed by the left or right arrow key to quickly jump to the next full B scan screen and also use the left and right arrows to review the individual thickness readings within the B scan. Once again, the thickness at that spot is displayed along with the distance traveled by the buggy to get to that spot. If you then connect the 38DL Plus to the GageView Thickness Interface program, you can transfer the B-Scan file and review it within GageView Thickness. In order to transfer the B-Scan data, you first need to turn on the B-Scan output in the Communications setting of the 38DL Plus. To do this, first press the red measure key to exit ID Review, then press the Setup menu key, then keep pressing the down arrow until you highlight COM, and then press Enter. Then press the down arrow to highlight B-Scan output, then press the right arrow to turn it on, then you can press the red measure key. You can now transfer the file into GageView Thickness. Once the file is transferred, you can click the dataset once and then double-click the survey file, which is the file name with the pencil and paper icon next to it. You can then click Review B-Scan. The image on top shows the full encoded B-Scan and allows you to highlight a certain portion of the scan to examine, while the image below displays the highlighted portion of the scan and allows the user to review the scan with the cursor. The user can also click Export to CSV. The user will then be prompted to choose the location on their computer to save the spreadsheet. Once saved, they can navigate to the file and open it. This will open a spreadsheet with all of the thickness readings and their corresponding distance traveled.